Hi guys and welcome to part two of this episode of Short Field, all about photography from the cockpit. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'll pop a card above and suggest it at the end of this video. In this part we're going to edit the shots we took from the aircraft and I've already downloaded them from the SD card into my computer. You require a raw file editor and there are lots available, both paid for and free. I use Adobe Camera Raw to edit my uh, raw files and then do some final touch-ups in Photoshop if required. But first, I'll open the folder in Adobe Bridge. Okay, so we've opened up Bridge, Adobe Bridge, and you can see uh, down the left-hand side of Bridge, we have uh, our favorites. Um, we've got some favorite folders set up. We've also got a filter on the lower left hand side and then we've got some thumbnails uh, in the center portion here uh, you can see all of the images that we took there's quite a few of them and you can see what I mean about taking lots of the same shot because it doesn't cost anything you can delete them afterwards if you don't use them um, but it just means if you take one and it's slightly out of focus or something doesn't look quite right or your angle isn't quite correct especially the way I take them with not looking through the viewfinder um, very much uh, some of them can be a bit hit and miss so just uh, looking through they don't look that great uh, in raw because we haven't done any editing with them yet so if we take um, this one for example just randomly picked uh, we can see that if I zoom in on it um, it's pretty much in focus on the uh, on the instruments, which is what we want. So that's all good. This is what I was saying about the outside will be always out of focus because we've focused on this portion of the canopy. Um, and obviously uh, the lens can't focus everywhere, <laughs> especially as it's a very wide lens. So we'll take this one to edit first of all, um, but first of all, let's have a look at uh, some of the data for it. So you can see that it's quite a big file. Raw files, are, because they hold all of the data from the sensor, are generally uh, a lot, lot bigger than JPEG files. So this one's uh, nearly 34 megabytes. An equivalent JPEG will probably be about 5 megabytes because a lot of the data will be pulled out of it. We've got the dimensions here uh, which give in pixels has given the size of the size of the image I think it's 32 megapixel and this here 16 bit depth uh, means uh, it's a raw file so it's got the full um, dynamic range in that file uh, it hasn't been reduced normally uh, uh, it'd be reduced to 8 bit if it was a JPEG and then you can see there the file name is CR3 which is uh, the the name for or, or the file extension for a Canon um, RAW file and here you can see uh, my camera settings at the time I took it so it was in um, TV mode or shutter priority mode and um, I had it set manually at 1 to 50th of a second and you can see that the props nice and blurred And uh, you can also see that uh, the camera selected f3.5, which at this focal length, I can tell you, is the maximum aperture for this lens. Um, it's in autofocus mode, auto white balance, so of interest. And uh, at the time, I think it was on an auto ISO. So the ISO it selected is 320. It's kept it as low as it can um, while trying to expose the image. But uh, it's not done a bad job and um, I think we'll try and use this one so we'll open it up in Adobe Camera Raw which is sort of part of Photoshop comes as a package and you can see here that actually you know when you look at it it doesn't look great but we'll pull out as much as we can from it and hopefully uh, we can make it look a lot better so I start off um, first thing I do is correct the optics so the camera has a, a camera raw has a built-in database of all of the lenses and cameras that are on the market or most of them most of the popular ones 
and uh, what it will do is it will remove any errors that it knows uh, whether they be uh, geometric errors in the lens or they'll account for distortion uh, or um, chromatic aberration which is where you get sort of colors around um, color fringing and stuff um, around objects where there's a dark or uh, subjects where there's a dark area and a light area sometimes the lens uh, it's usually down to poor quality glass but um, it knows all of that so we'll tick those two first of all so it knows that it's a canon um, lens it knows that which lens it is and it's adjusted for it you can do some of your own adjusting as well so after i've done that um i know that this is is sort of quite noisy but we can go back and, and try and sort that out a bit later so under the basic settings we're going to go and first of all, we're going to try and pull out some of this dark area. We're going to try and make this uh, a bit brighter. And you'll be amazed at how much you can pull out without um, without using, losing any quality. So these are the shadows and I'll start pulling out the shadows and you'll see straight away that it's starting to look a lot, lot better. You can go sort of all the way, but then you're going to start showing up all these dark areas of noise. Um, so you want to make it more realistic. Um, yeah, there's still lots of noise in here, and we'll try and uh, address that a bit later on. But it'll be the dark areas uh, that suffer the most, like down here. But if you're not using this for print, if you're just using it online... Um, by the time you've reduced the file a little bit and um, turned it into a JPEG, done a bit of uh, noise reduction on it, it's not going to be too bad. So this is not zoomed in at all. This is actually 100%. So um, if I zoom in, you'll, you'll see even more that uh, the noise is really present. But you're not really, you're looking at a combination of noise and the actual pixels making up the image. But at 100%, that's exactly what the image is. So we will go back and um, fit it back into view. So next thing I do is I will address the sky. Now you can you can use things called filters in Camera Raw. And um, in the latest version of it, there's actually one that will automatically select the sky for you. Um, but I'll use a linear gradient because that's more common on uh, non-Adobe uh, RAW editors. So we'll drag down a filter. And what I'm doing is everything that's in the red area, I'm going to make adjustments to. Everything that's in the not covered by the, the red area, the filter, um, I'm not going to make any ed uh, edits to. So... Uh, it's just masking off certain areas of the image and I want to concentrate on the sky. So we will now look at the sky and bringing some of that, the highlights, actually out of that to balance the, the, the image. So we'll start bringing down the highlights and we'll bring down the shadows a little bit. And we also have this slide here for dehazing, I mean if you whack it right up you can see what it does, just massive amount of contrast um, but it, it looks ridiculous so we just want to be very gentle with the dehaze you can add a bit of clarity in it and again clarity will just show out it's a bit of a contrast or a curves adjustment and it's just bringing out uh, or showing more detail in the cloud just by adding more contrast to it. it can look really dramatic when you've got storms and things like that to add a bit of clarity into it along with a dehaze texture doesn't tend to do a lot so I don't generally use that um, we don't want too much blue in the sky um, if there'd been a sunset and we can have a look at another one but if there's a sunset you can normally add a little bit of uh, saturation just to make the colors pop on the sunset um, and that's it for that. So we'll go back to editing the whole image. Certainly looks a lot better than it did. 
um, and we'll now go in and just try and address some of this noise. So this is it at a hundred percent. So this is all we're worried about. We're not worried about it at any um, any closer zoom than that. Um, and we'll go into the detail tab, and there's a noise reduction, simple noise reduction, uh, but it is very good. And you'll see as it's adjusted, a lot of this noise will go away. So if I pull the slider across, you can see that noise is just going away. So before and after. What it does is it, it's merging the pixels together, together making, um, looking for any uh, grain. So it's softening it and it's, uh, and it's un making the color more uniform. So there isn't any sort of color spots or artifacts um, that are going to make it grainy. Uh, it's still, you know, it's still not great over here. Uh, we could look at adjusting that. Um, but the further you go, the more blurred the image will get and you'll lose detail. So you can see as I push it right up, detail starts to go and then it just looks really soft. So you want to be a bit careful with that. But uh, so that is pretty much a finished um, a finished image. I'm not saying that's the best one because it is actually not that good in focus. It's obviously focused more on the phone rather than the uh, than the instruments. But I, I I would have shot it based on this area here. But sometimes you know because I'm not always looking through the through the camera, I don't see what it as 100% focused on and it could have that the autofocus might have just gotten to the phone and the phone's sticking forward from the uh, uh, from the instruments by probably a hundred mil or so so it's it's closer in uh, and when you're getting this close focus you you know it is actually quite a narrow area that would be in focus and you can see over here that it's really out of focus. That's because the sweet spot of the lens and with it being at uh, f3.5 um, is going to be somewhere around here. Okay, let's look at another one. So we're back in Bridge and uh, that's the one we've just edited. You can see it's been edited because it's got a little sign by the side of it uh, showing um, that this one w we've already played about with. But we can always, it's non-destructive, so you can always go back and uh, just go back to the original um, and redo it all again if you want to. So let's look at something else. Let's look at, um, what one can we look at that's a bit different? Let's go for one of these wing shots. Problem with these is that it's picking up the the sun's picking up all the um, little scratches and marks in the perspex of the canopy, so uh, they're not that that great. Um, yeah, they look alright when you see them uh, as thumbnails, but as soon as you as soon as you um, open them up, they just look rubbish. That one looks quite good. Uh, we'll give this one a go. So we'll open it back up in Camera Raw. And just have a little closer look at it. This one obviously was pretty much around sunset time. Um, shot at, again ISO 320. F5.6 this time. And uh, 1 200th of a second in uh, TV or shutter priority mode. So the first thing we'll do, we'll go down and we'll fix the optics as we did before. Um, not too much to adjust on this one. No, oh, I didn't find too much of a problem with it. Um, the other thing is, is that um, it's not really uh, level, but we can fix that a bit later on. So I'll show you how we'll fix that. You can do it in Camera Raw. I just prefer to do it after I've edited it. So we we'll, because it will involve a little bit of cropping. So um, 
let's look at the areas we want to address. So we've got the sky. Um, that needs doesn't pop at all. Uh, and then we've got the wing in the foreground. So we'll start off doing a, pretty much the same settings as we did before. So we will bring um, down the highlights and pull out the shadows. But on this image, because the dark areas are over here, it's not, and there's no detail there, it's not actually going to make a lot of difference. So, uh, but it will with the sky, we can do something with the sky. So we'll um, we'll bring our clarity button up again, or our clarity slider up again. Let's bring a bit more detail out of the wing. You can see there's still plenty of noise in it. And again, we'll address that with the noise uh, reduction later on. And uh, what we'll do this time is, is this wing is white, but it doesn't look white. So uh, we're going to adjust the white, uh, white balance for it, or color temperature, sorry, for it. So we're going to bring it so it's a bit more or a bit warmer. So we'll adjust the slider just to bring it up a little bit. And straight away you can see that the image has gone from a cool image to a warmer image. And that would represent the sunset, um, the sun setting. We can add a little bit more saturation on that. We can start to really bring out the, uh, the colours on the edge of these uh, clouds up here and also on the horizon so uh, next thing we'll add a little bit of dehaze into it and we will now select the sky we'll do the same thing again we we'll use a linear gradient and we'll bring those highlights back down some of the shadows but this time we can really add some noise uh, clarity into it just to pull just to really show those clouds off and uh, and again just a little bit more dehazing might need to back off on the saturation because this is getting really blue and that should do it for those Okay, um, the white of the wing just needs to be pulled out a little bit. So by pulling up the whites, you can see that all the whites in the image are being uh, brought out. And uh, if you go too far, you can see what happens. So you can see by the graph up here, if it gets to the edge here, uh, these are your highlights. Uh, you've blown your highlights, so there's too much uh, white. I mean, you can see that from the image, but it means that this area here will be pure white, and it's showing you, it's giving you a warning up here that uh, you've just gone too far with it. So you just bring that back, and we'll just do a noise adjustment on that. This gets rid of some of that noise. And just moving the slider to the right, you can see that we've got rid of a lot of that noise, considering it's a, a pretty noisy shot. But there's not too much detail to lose, so it actually doesn't look too bad. Okay, let's open it in Photoshop. So we've opened in Photoshop now, uh, and again, there's uh, other editors free and paid for that you can use do pretty much the same things we're only doing basic stuff to it so first of all I'm going to straighten up the horizon you can see here that the horizon is not straight compared to uh, the grid so what we'll do is we'll just adjust it eyeball it and uh, just turn off content aware so go okay, it looks pretty much straight now uh, and that looks better and um, if you have any sort of like marks on the on the canopy or things like that you can always use the uh, spot healing brush to just take them out we haven't really got anything on here I mean you could say that that probably was this mark here and that will just remove those if your wings extra dirty 
sometimes do it when there's flies on the wing in summer. Got to be careful though that you don't do the uh, rivets in the wing. Let's just clean that up a little bit. Okay, so that's it. That's how I edit them. Um, then I'll export them as a JPEG. And, uh, oh, it's gone over, to my, gone over to my other screen. Let me just get that back. So we can then choose what size we want. Um, and what quality we want. And then we can just export it. Decide where it's going to go. And that's it. And that's how I edit them. I'll put some uh, of these images, maybe not these ones. I might, well, I might, I'll put these in and I'll put a few others in, in a link below. And you can download them. They'll be in raw files. So you can have a look and play with them and see what you think. So hopefully you find that helpful. Um, it's how I do it, how I edit my photos. Um, but there's lots of ways of doing it. I'm not saying this is right at all, but it's just the way I like to do it. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.